Ashlyn here. Welcome back to the Children's Science Center lab. While we are closed for the time being, we're gonna keep doing some science demonstrations for you all. So today I have the iodine and clock science experiment, or the potato clock, some people call it. Um, this is a reaction that was discovered in the 1800s and is really popular because it's kind of fun and kind of silly way to combine different ingredients to actually make your own clock or timer. Um, so I have my ingredients here today, um, some of which might be familiar to you, some of which are a little strange. Um, I have water in both of these flasks, and what I'm gonna do with the water is combine my potato starch. So potato starch is a carbohydrate. It's kind of that, if you eat, ever eat a potato that's not fully cooked all the way, that kind of taste in your mouth. Um, and cornstarch is another type of starch like you use to make oobleck, um, so it's kind of similar to that. Let's see here. So I'm gonna mix this up with my water to create a potato starch solution. Ding, 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 and I'm gonna do a couple of these. And I'm gonna get a little messy because as always, science is messy. So I've got my potato starch mixed up in here and I'm gonna combine it with potassium iodide. So potassium iodide is also known as Ki. Um, K stands for potassium, I stands for iodide. Um, and both of these are minerals or elements on the periodic table that we actually use in our body. So bananas have potassium in them, um, iodine something we need to keep us healthy. So these things combined are used in chemistry a lot as a stain. So let's see if we can tell what I mean by a stain. Let's see what happens when I pour this in there. Do you see that? So right away it turns that kind of blue color. If I leave it here over time and if I add more potato starch in, that will get darker. So Chemists will use this or also biologists to look at little samples and to stain things. So if I just combine these two things together, that re reaction will happen again. But what I'm actually gonna do is try and slow that reaction down for a second. All right, so now I'm gonna move on and do it with the bigger one. But I have a lot of different measurements, lots of different ingredients you can see, so I wrote them down so I can remember. So my first step is adding five tablespoons of my potato starch into my water. So I actually did that already, um, but I wanna mix this up. It's kinda hard to mix this. I can't really reach my hand in there. I need a really long stir stick, right? So I actually have a magnetic stirrer. So this plate right here is a magnet, and so is this. You can see it sticks on there, and then as I, as I spin it, it spins, so it will stir it for me. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm actually gonna drop this right in the middle there and stir it on my magnetic stir. You can kind of see that moving around in there, so that'll get that stirring up for me. All right, so now I have my other ingredients. So as we saw in this first example, if I stick these things, two things right together right away, they'll change color. But I want something a little bit different to happen, so I'm gonna switch it up just a little bit. I have here an ANA solution. That stands for acetic and ascorbic acid. You might be thinking, what is acetic acid? It's just vinegar, which you have in your house. And that is an acid on the pH scale. Then we have ascorbic acid. You might be thinking, ah, ascorbic acid, dangerous. Ascorbic acid is actually just vitamin C. So I mixed up some vitamin C powder water and vinegar into here to make a solution. We call something a solution when it is mixed in with water and it has dissolved. So for example, if you mix lemonade powder in water, now you have a lemonade solution. All right, so I have measured my 400 milliliters of my ANA solution and I'm gonna pour this in here. So what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna separate the iodine molecules I have in here so they won't react with this. It's gonna block that reaction. This acid, this vitamin C, is gonna block the reaction from happening. Kind of like a football player blocking the quarterback. Let's see if this will work. So I am going to put, oh, my handy dandy recipe, a thousand milliliters of this, again, solution because we dissolved the potassium iodide crystals into here ahead of time for you all. I'm gonna measure a thousand milliliters of this into my beaker. Now remember, when I added this, the potato starch right away in there, it turned color right away. Let's see if it'll change color now. 
Is it changing color? Is it doing the reaction? Wait. No. That doesn't look like anything's happening. Oh, wait. No, that's what's supposed to happen. Exactly. Okay. So this is where the timer part comes in. I can change how long this is going to take to react by changing up how much ascorbic and acetic acid I put in there, as well as how much of my next ingredient I'm putting in here. This is a combination of water and hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide is like water. It has an extra oxygen molecule in there. I was trying to think, extra hydrogen, extra oxygen, extra oxygen molecule in there. And hydrogen peroxide will be used to clean cuts and things like that. And so it will actually kind of eat away, like in your cut, it'll eat away at dirt, bacteria, germs. In here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna eat away at that acid. So it'll take the acid out of the way for me so this reaction can happen. So I got my handy dandy timer here and I'm going to measure, let's see, check my recipe book. 80 milliliters of the H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide solution. So I'm gonna measure my, I got my 80 marked in here. And you know what? I'm gonna pour, open this up. And it's always best if you're measuring with a beaker or measuring anything really to do it on a flat surface so you can see the level of the water accurately. We call the point at which it is the lowest point of the water, the meniscus, fun science word. All right. As soon as I pour this in, I'm gonna hit start on the timer and see how much time it takes. Are you ready? Let's let's come in and get maybe a little bit of a closer look. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. And we'll see. I actually know how long this is gonna take because I put the solutions together. But let's see, nothing's happening right away, right? We put a decent amount, we put 400 milliliters of that a and A solution in there, and only a teeny tiny bit of this. So only a little bit of this for all of that. Do you think it might take a little while for it to eat it up? So if I change the amounts of this and the amounts of this, oh, there we go. All right, so it was actually 32 seconds, but very close to 30 seconds because of the amount of this that I did. So you could also measure a different amount, measure more of the acetic and ascorbic acid and have it go up to a minute or a minute and 30 seconds or even two minutes. So you can use this as a timer. And as soon as that happened, it happened really fast, right? You'll also notice that this one is a lot darker than this one. That's because we used a lot more of our potassium iodide and our potato starch to make it a little bit more dramatic. What do you guys think you would use this timer for? 30 seconds, hmm. Think of all the things you could do in 30 seconds. All right, thanks for joining me today, guys. Hope to see you again next time.